was late January when the Wolfpack came out on top 95 to 91 in overtime. Today, the NC State team will have home court advantage in hopes to take down the Tar Heels once again. Sitters breaking down on a camel's back. They just have to go because they don't know where. So I you feel the streets is appealing to see. You won't get under county because you stand them free. You got a new horizon, it's ephemeral style. A melancholy town where we never smile. And all I want to hear is the message beep. My dreams, they got a kiss because I don't get sleep, no. No, 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 shot, shit, it, it, it. Are you going to rush the court when the game's over? They're only ranked 27, so I don't think I'm going to rush a 27th ranked team, but... Point guard Joel Berry said he didn't consider NC State a rival. Would you guys consider the Tar Heels to be a rival? Well, if you value opinion, you know, I don't value his, but uh, look at this game. Definitely rivals. The road. Uh, they had a game over there to go beat UNC. I'm Ethan Mary for this week's 60 second sound off. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody except for Luke May. It would have been nice to sweep them, get our brooms out. You know, I think we can hold hold our heads high in the fact that it took a historical performance from Luke May and really from their team as a whole shooting 78% in the second half and they could barely hold us off. That tells you that we're headed in the right direction. We should give them credit, but we won't because they're garbage and they got credit for not going to class so they don't get any credit. I enjoyed seeing Markel give his child some advice, Joel Berry, good fatherly figure. I still take Kevin Keats over Roy Williams any day of the week and twice on Sundays. How do you get Luke May to walk on at your school versus scholarship offers from other ACC teams? NC State's not lucky enough to have something like that happen to them. Took their best effort of the year to barely hold us off when they shot 78%. I do think the crowd was too good though. If the crowd hadn't been so good, I don't know that they would have been as ready for the game. I don't want to say the crowd hurt us, but I definitely think the crowd helped them a lot. They're not used to playing in front of a sellout crowd and a loud crowd, so I'm sure they embraced it. Kevin Keats is still a winner. I'm Blake Charlton, and this is Pack TV's We Were There. From PNC Arena, it's NC State's Ice Pack going up against UNC Chapel Hill.
I'm here with James. James, what do you think of the game so far? Uh, it's been a great game. I'm really excited to watch UNC lose again, and it's been a great time. So what do you think? What's your prediction of the final score? Um, I think we're going to win 10-4 right now. It's really going to pull away in this last period. It's 5-3 right now. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm All very right. confident in our team. Go back. <laughs> What do you think is going to be the final score? It's 5-3 right now. We're going into the third period. Well, what's it going to be? I guessed 8-4. My boyfriend thinks it's going to be 7-3. 7-4. 7-4? What about you? I kind of feel like it's going to stay the same. I think we can tie this game up by the end of the third period. 6-3. Six 6-3? To three. Six to three? NC State. You? I'm going with 6-4 NC State. plays out with the game as far as how they're going to adjust to it but Duke definitely coming out strong pass goes a little wide for number 17 Antoine Esber goes to a Duke throw in throw in taken by number nine Mason Selig goes to number two Duke still holding possession of the ball moving very very well against this strong NC State defense and goes out for the first corner kick of the game to Duke. Duke corner goes off NC State for another Duke corner kick. Both corners were taken by number eight, Austin Rogers. The one definitely proving to be a problem for both, both the players. And us as well, as you can hear a little bit over here. Goes high, finds the red foot, cleared out by NC State, trying to take it fast down the field. NC State has sort of been on the defensive for the beginning of this match as well. Not really pushing the ball forward, not a lot of forward movement past the half. We'll see how that changes as things go on. Maybe NC State likes to play play the long ball a little bit here Duke closer with shorter passes going out a little a little jumble at the top NC State and Duke are playing really really close close balls a lot of head to head neither team seem to be really possessing much so far during the game but again it's still early Still a lot of chances for that to change. Finds red feet and then just completely taken away. NC State keeps managed to keep hold of the ball, controlling it in their half. Not really pushing toward to NC State or to the Duke half. Back and forth possession between both NC State and Duke. Kept held a little bit by a Duke player and an advance stop. That advance made by number 17, Antoine Esber, who was playing at the top for Duke. Missed shot on goal by number eight, Carson Monteverde. And saved by the NC State keeper. <laughs> Definitely taking his time, setting up to pass that or to. Uh, do a goal kick for that one. I think another thing important about today is time. Time is going to be the essence for a lot of these plays, making sure that everybody is using their space efficiently. I think so far in the match, both NC State and Duke haven't necessarily found their footing with the ball and where it relates to them on the field. Try by number 17, Antoine Esber is stopped by NC State, and it's back to NC State's ball in the Duke half for the first for the first time, really, since this match has started. Yeah, good action over there on the Duke side for the Wolfpack. A lot of communicating on the field. If you were here yesterday for the women's soccer game, that was one of the one of the big things that we were talking about, not enough communication. But both Duke and NC State really seem to be utilizing those vocal cords, making sure that they know where each other are on the field. And that's why we're seeing a lot more movement of the ball now than we did yesterday. Absolutely. Good, good communication is really important to be a successful team. Number nine, 
drives the ball. Let's see if he can earn a corner there. And that's a goal kick. Unfortunate mistake there by number eight. We know his number eight's name. No. no. <laughs> We're working on it. Goal kick by the goalie for NC State. Or sorry, the goalie for Duke, number three. Nice pass on the left side over there. Let's see if he can get a center. Didn't really seem to clear it as much as he would want. Good, good shot and a good headed away for Duke. Yeah, nice clearance by Jonathan Stern over there. But State seems to still be controlling it, trying to pass it downfield. Duke defense really, really stepping up, stepping to the plate, applying that pressure to NC State where they see fit. Yeah, the key to the game is definitely getting the ball in the box with <laughs> as many people in there as possible. Beginning of the game is always a little tighter. Always definitely trying to find their footing. Uh, throw in taken by number three, Jeffrey Lee for Duke. Trying to make an open, trying to find space. How's the weather here t today compared to yesterday, Lula? Oh my gosh, definitely, definitely <laughs> better. Like 10 degrees warmer, which you can see the players are really adjusting to. But again, that wind is going to be a factor for the duration of this game. NC State trying to find an opening for that throw in. Good look and a good turn by NC State's number eight. Still trying to find that roster. Nice center, number nine. He has Just a chance. One. Oh, Duke Beautiful defense opportunity. definitely stepping up. And a shot goes wide by NC State. You can see some frustration by the NC State players about that missed shot. But you have to be happy about the setup. Good, good pass there. One-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Definitely, all players stepped up to the plate. You know where they were supposed to, where the, where they were supposed to be. Unfortunately, number fourteen just couldn't seem to get it right. Still don't have his name. No, I mean he doesn't even have a name on the roster. We roster. might figure it out later. Another throne for state. Passing it back. Definitely using that back line. NC State has been strong about keeping it to their defense. Not a lot of pushing forward, but we do see a run made by Will Glass for NC State. That doesn't work out too well. Blocked out a little bit by the NC State defense. Trying to look for a, a foul there, but not receiving it. Ref is not having that at all. Duke seems to be keeping the ball really well. Pass goes to number one, Pete Polonski. Down the field, NC State defense is taking care of that. That's number 18. Griffin Brookshire chasing that ball down. Ball goes high, high into the sun. A little joust for that ball taken by NC State very, very well. A lot of great ball movement and hustle going on by NC State, but the Duke defense is taking care of that very, very quickly, very easily, not letting that become a problem. That was Chase Hahn with the clear. And he hits it out of bounds there to make sure his defense is time to get back. Yeah, that's the useful thing about throw-ins. It gives you time to set up and adjust. But NC State needs to take this quickly if they want to capitalize on that opportunity. Otherwise, that's just wasted time for them. Especially in these early minutes of the first half, there's no real lollygagging that can go on here. NC State controlling the ball, looking for an option, looking for an option. Pass goes to number 18, Griffin Brookshire. For NC State, NC State still has possession. Of the ball, that was number three, Udai Kayama. Back with the ball. Again, a lot of short passes. NC State's usually utilizing that, giving Duke sort of frustration with that. You could see a little bit of a, a little bit of a kick there, trying to trip him and get the ball away. Nice job switching the field there, putting pressure on the other side of the defense. That goes back to Duke, though. A little miscommunication with ball handling. But back to NC State, these passes need to be clean in order for any one team to keep possession of the ball. And again, back to Duke, that's Duke's number two, doesn't have a name, oh, sorry, excuse me, Mandy Nowak with the ball, utilizing his side, utilizing his speed to get that across. And it's back in the NC State half for Duke to have possession of it, trying to make a shot on goal. Unfortunate turnover there. Gives Duke a little more life as NC State has been dominating the possession game so right. far. Duke needs to adjust to this quick, quick run, and that's an offsides call. 
on number one for Duke, Sean Gain. Sorry, number one for NC State song, Sean Gain. Good call by the ref. That was definitely offsides, too. Yeah, you've got to watch it, especially with these fast breaks. Those offside traps are going to be what saves Duke in these first few minutes because definitely State has the speed against Duke. But setting up and making sure that you can catch those in an offside trap and make sure that the ref is watching as well because it's not offside unless the ref catches it. So Duke was very, very good about making that call over there. Yeah, that back line of defense is probably the most important thing. Free kick goes long for a shot attempt missed by Duke, cleared very, very well by the NC State defense, and it's back with a sprint downfield. Sprint. The ball is held by number nine, Jeremy Twitt, right now. Didn't seem to find an opening upfield, so he passes it back. But, again, NC State is still past that half line, so anything is possible. Oh, no, missed clear by, the NC, by Duke's goalie that gets picked up by Duke, but unfortunately uh, not capitalized Another and chance. saved. Oh, man. Good chance by number eight there. Great chances there. Duke's goalie, however, number zero was all over that, not letting that go. Seems to still be finding his footing, but his clear goes pretty poorly. Back to NC State. That was a pass by number one, Sean Gange, to number 14, who is still nameless at this point <laughs> in the game. Duke forward line is not having it, though. Trying to be as fast as possible. A couple of missed touches there at the half. Loss of a fast break goes back to NC State in the Duke half. Five shots on the goal so far in this game for State. Let's see if they can put one up. <laughs> NC State women's club soccer was having the same problem yesterday where they were just you know pelting and pelting and pelting it, but still couldn't seem to get it in the back of the net. Duke is definitely feeling that <laughs> gracious now because none of these shots, fortunately for them, has gone in. But NC State is not giving up on opportunities. That was a pass by number eight, Will Glass, downfield to number nine, Jeremy Twitt, goes out for an NC State corner. Good play action there between, I think, number nine and eight. For NC State? Yeah. Definitely. They seem to really be cooperating with each other and holding it together in the top half. I don't think they're forwards though. I'm pretty sure they're midfielders, so must be attacking mids if they're making all of those opportunities for the other players on their team. Bad clear. Goes right back to NC State, right before the top of the box. Great pass to number nine, Jeremy Twitt, and headed out. Another bad clear by Duke. They need to work on getting it to the, to the white players, you know, to Duke players if they want to make sure that they get it out of the box because it just seems to be a, a real big jumble here. Definitely. They should try to kick it out as soon as possible. Just letting it bounce, heading it. These guys are not that tall, so it's not really going anywhere but up. Another good pass and a great I guess, save. I guess you can call it a save. <laughs> good save by Duke's goalie. Another really bad clear, but some great, great footwork by number 17, Antoine Esber. Seems to be the star of the Duke forward line. Great run and a little bit of a trip up, but still manages to hold on to the ball before it gets out. And that's called in Duke's favor for a throw-in. Yeah, let's see if Duke can get a, get a little action on our goal here. They're definitely an underdog coming into this game, having missed on ra uh, red regionals last year. I'm sorry. Yeah, NC State, being the regional champs, have a lot to a lot to fight for to keep that title. Make sure. It's strength. And we have a couple of substitutions going on. Going on for NC State number 15, Patrick Bailey. And number 11, Romaine Ortis. Coming off for Duke is number 22, Aman Ibrahim. And going on is number 4, Viraj Patel. Utilizing subs this early, definitely making sure to keep the team as fresh as possible. Gives a new dynamic on the field as well. Let's see how these subs play up to the action that's been we've been seeing so far wondering if the pass progression is going to be the same what's going to change for both of these teams especially nc state on the defensive right now throw in for duke and a shot saved by the nc state goalkeeper christian hall good shot on goal there for duke they haven't had that was actually the first one of the game so <laughs> great it's great one to start off of. action Great touches by number 11, Romain Ortis, taking it down the field, utilizing his speed and his size against the Duke defense. And, oh, oh just 
Shot goes just wide. Great opportunity. Should have seen the cross there. He definitely had it if he wanted it, but was looking to take that all the way to the back of the net. Good idea, though. He just checked into the game and got gets a little shot right away. Yeah, trying to use that super sub action over there. <laughs> but that's definitely the energy that you need to bring onto the field. We have another substitution, number two, Joey DeSerafino, going in for NC State. wonder why the goalie for Duke isn't taking this goal kick. You know, I've always had that question, but I actually I kind of like it when goalies don't take the goal kick because you never know what that shot is going to look like and having a having a player in goal to make sure that if anything happens that we still have a defensive option I think is is really nice. I have never thought about that, but it makes a lot of sense. If it's a shank kick, there's a guy there at it, least try to save a goal. Exactly. You know, if a body gets in front of that, that's going to ricochet right into goal. So just having somebody there as an option. Oh, no. Nasty hit taken by number 15. Patrick Duke Bailey just goes chance. off. Oh, save. Beautiful save. And a beautiful attempt by Duke's number number 17. Excuse me. That's Antoine Esber. Again, has been such a force at the top line for Duke. Great touches are being made right now by NC State, especially by number 11, Romain Ortis. That super sub again trying to come in and make some changes happen for the NC State midfield line. Open, wide open, clear. Goes well by number 16 for Duke, Jonathan Stern. Good clearance there by Jonathan. Let's see if Duke can get a little more action here. Taking it down the line. Definitely a size difference between Duke's front line and NC State's back line. Duke's number 11, Carson Monteverde, matching up maybe a couple of inches shorter than people marking up against him. High ball gets headed right to Romain Ortis. A little joust for the ball between number three, Jeffrey Lee, and Romain for NC State. Looks like Duke got a little bit more life in them. Yeah. The last five minutes. I don't know what happened. Maybe it's these subs, but they've definitely been jump-started. Ooh, that's got to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good move by number 11 for State. Oh, he lost his footing. Still but got a pass made off. made a great, great pass here. We got a shot on goal. And oh, that's, one, nothing. that's in the back of the net. I think that's number nine for State. Yep, that number nine, Jeremy Twid, played a great, great first minutes of the game so far. That was a great little present. Uh, Progression, excuse me, number 11, Romain Ortis passed it, and the assist goes to number I'll, – I'll get back to you on that as soon as I figure out who the assist has gone to. Now we've got a couple substitutions on the field going in as number 12. Again, nameless. We'll get you names as soon as we have them. Good action by number 11 there to get that pass off as he was falling down. Give State the early lead. Duke defense really just did not see him back there, didn't cover him, didn't have a man on him wide open. One-on-one -on -one with the goalie, totally defenseless. There's nothing that he could do about that. So far, State has been able to get through that middle of the back line. It was a That's really disappointing for Duke. Really ambitious play there, kicking it all the way forward, not having a man there. But Duke seems to keep hold of it. That was a pass by Duke's number four, Viraj Patel, looking for an opening, trying to signal to his guys that he is open, a little bit frustrated with that play. But that goes in Duke's favor. The free throw, I'm sorry, throw in will be taken by number nine, Mason Selig. Kept in by Duke. Duke has been really good about keeping possession in this first half, but that was a shanked, completely shanked attempt by number 11, Carson Monverde for Duke at the top. Um, excuse me, number 17. Antoine Esber at the top usually has good touches, but that just are went the off the ground. Are refs calling it a corner? Refs are calling a corner, so maybe there was, maybe there was a touch. It must have hit a by NC State player players. down there. A little windy on this corner. Good clearance by number five for State. Yeah, I Let's think see. also the wind bent in his favor a little <laughs> bit there. Luckily for them. Maybe they should try to s score from there. <laughs> Pass back to the NC State goalie. Duke applying a little bit of pressure, not too much though. I think that's the key, probably. Get keep the possession, keep Duke on the defensive, tired him out. Definitely 
again in the middle, number 11, Romain Ordis making all of the plays, holding that center midfield down, playing his position very well. And we have it again at the top of the half for Duke on the Duke side. A little bit of a missed touch by number two for Duke, Joey DeSerafino. A little bit obsessed with, upset about that. Good action, though, by State, getting that ball in the box. Just a little bit behind this forward there. Duke has been really great about the breaks as well, though. But lost a little bit by number 17, Antoine Esbert, for Duke. Is disappointed about that play. Fortunately for them, it is a Duke throw, and it'll give them an opportunity to set up and take that really quickly if they have it. But they seem to be taking their time, which you can't do if you're down 1-0 and haven't had possession for most of the game. Shot attempt goes wide by Duke's number eight, Austin Rogers. Good try, though. It was very ambitious, I would say. He's probably hoping for a little bit of curve on that, but that just went straight, completely diagonal. And we have a substitution going in is number eight, Will Glass, who you saw come off earlier. We see a state, he a state team here with, it looks like five or six subs. Uh, Duke with one. So I guess... Fatigue might kick in. Yeah, these guys are going to be the game goes on. incredibly tired by the end. Maybe that's why they're conserving their energy. But they seem to be playing more, playing smarter rather than harder in these early few minutes. Bad pass there on the far side incredibly. of us. Incredibly, NC State needs to watch that, not get lax. You Another know, turnover. Both teams just struggling to hold possession for a long time with that ball. Number five, Richard Wright having all the space in the world to make that pass. Bad touch by number 17 for Duke. Antoine, Antoine Esber, excuse me. Which in, results in an NC State turnover. Trying to number get it to 11. back. Romain with a great, great pass. Say, or sorry, a great shot saved by the goal. Kept in by Duke. Cleared and then kept in. Number 17, Antoine Esberg, coming back for Duke to take that. Bad pass again. Goes straight to NC State. That is number six. Brendan No with that. Great opportunity for Ro. What's his name? Romain Ortis. Ortis. That's his second shot on goal this game. Good save by Duke there. Duke's goalie seems to be messing up. Fortunately for him, he keeps being saved by his defense. Coming back, covering all of his weak spots, taking that ball, which is exactly what you want the defense to do. But your goal also has to be up to a certain standard if you expect any survival in a game, especially with a team as lethal as NC State's. Duke's goalie has been doing great so far, though. Here comes Ortis again. One-on-one -on -one with the goalie, and just, <laughs> oh, off the post. Looking for a penalty on that, not given that's his third chance that he's had this game so far most likely a little frustrated he just needs to get his feet planted on the ground and take that it is a duke goal kick coming off his number 17 antoine esber you can tell he's very very tired played the entire game played hard at the top coming in is number 22 22 aman ibrahim playing a position excuse me playing a position that's a little bit unfamiliar to him and it goes straight to NC State's number eight, Will Glass, taking it down the field, playing that back line very well, switching switching the field. Works out in their favor. A little bit of mis miscommunication there, trying to go for a fancy little pass. Didn't work out too well. Maybe stick to the basics <laughs> while your team is still figuring stuff out. Good back touch there for number 18. A good so hard a run shot. and a great clear by Duke's number eight, Austin Rogers. Another chance there for State, though. To set up and take that. Yeah, if they take it quickly, but they still seem to be lollygagging. You need to get there before Duke is properly set up. Pass back to the thrower, number 15, Patrick Bailey. Duke's trying to clear it out as much and as quickly as possible. Now NC State seems to be putting on the Jets to get those down. Has to be in. incredibly frustrating to play defense pretty much the whole first half so far. Oh, yeah, especially if your defense is tied with with as little subs as they have. They really can't be exhausting that defense because that's when accidents happen. On a foul there. On number two for State, Joey DeSerafino. We saw him come in earlier as a sub. Didn't start out the game, but has been playing what seems to be like the majority of it. 
This looks like a direct kick here to be taken by the super sub number 11, Romain Ortiz, for NC State. See if he can get it up and over that Duke defensive line. Seem to be putting up a pretty hefty wall there. Let's see if he passes or shoots right here. It's kind of close. Well, the, the way that the setup looks, it looks like it's going to be a direct kick, which means that, you know, he has to get it in the back of the net. And, and he, does. he does. Beautiful kick past the wall by number 11, Romain Ortiz for NC State. Didn't touch a single Duke player that just curved around. Definitely seemed confident about taking this sh that shot, and the super sub does it bringing NC State up 2-0 before the half is even done. Duke really needs to opportunize. They have the ball right now. First touch is on the ball. They need to get it forward in advance if they want to even have a chance at coming back in this game, or NC State will definitely just truck them over and take it. You see number four, Viraj Patel for Duke with the first passes. I guess, I guess fourth time is the charm for Ortiz. <laughs> he could have had two more right now. I know. Finally for him, though. If Duke doesn't figure it out on defense here, we might be looking at a a blowout, a game. huge blowout game. This game could easily be five or four to five, nothing right now. Duke needs to put Antoine Esber back in into the front line because he was the one making all the opportunities, and they need to clean it up. But number 22 for Duke, Aman Ibrahim, trying to take everything into his own hands. Fortunately, didn't work out for him. Should have looked for the pass there. That goes back to NC State at their defensive line, going it down the line. Looked like it was out there. Duke praying for a call, nothing there. That Duke midfield is definitely holding on there. That clear by number eight, Austin Rogers, in the NC State half, trying to dribble it down the field. Shot goes a little bit missed off the ground. That was taken by number three, Jeffrey Lee. Excuse me, not number three, number nine for Duke, Mason Selig, looking for an opportunity. Unfortunately, that ground did not seem to agree with him with that shot. Six shots so far for Duke, three on goal. They're going to need a lot more than that. They're going to they need get back a lot this more game. than that. You're absolutely right. But at least that was something positive so far. NC State goalie doesn't seem to be working that hard for it, though. They need to find the, the right balance between power and finesse to get it into the back of the goal. That had a lot of finesse, but none of the power it needed. Ricochet off the ground, unfortunately for him. But they need to t take more opportunities like that and take more shots if they want to capitalize on something. Duke's back line is working really hard, though, trying to get it to the top. Midfield holding it down. That was a pass to number eight, Austin Rogers, trying to advance play forward as much as possible. Number 11 for Duke, Carson Monverde, using his speed, using his size in his favor. He's a little bit shorter. Good pressure by State, though, unabling Duke to move forward. And see, the thing I like about NC State's pressure is that it's not a physical pressure. It's just there, you know, forcing them to make the errors rather than using a lot of physicality to get to that point. Great throw in taken by number 16 for Duke, Jonathan Stern. Yeah, like you said, it looks like they're just playing their spots. They're not going, they're not doing anything crazy. Duke's just trying to get out of that, out of their half. <laughs> Definitely which I think is good, giving them time to set up. NC State doesn't seem to be in too much of a hurry, which should work for Duke's favor, getting in the right position and taking it well. You can tell that Duke or NC State is kind of riding on a high right now, but they need to be careful so that they don't make mistakes while they feel comfortable. Looks like we have a sub for State, number 10 coming on for Steven... I cannot read that last name. <laughs> That's Steven Sizemore for you, number 10. Whoever wrote our list, it doesn't have the greatest of <laughs> handwriting. Antoine Esvers also comes on for Duke. Again, we saw him very big powerhouse in the first couple of minutes of this game. NC State backline adjusting to that as well. Hopefully he comes on with a new energy, drank some Gatorade or something. Get that back on so that Duke can capitalize on the opportunity. But the Duke mid midfield also needs to see him, see him open. No one is covering him right now. They need to pressure the ball and get that to him as quickly as possible if they want to make a score. Bad clear goes out just for a Duke throw in, which is not what you want because Duke has some powerhouse throwers. They can get it far, far into the field. Hopefully they can capitalize on that. Let's see if number three, Jeffrey Lee, will do just that for Duke, taking the throw in. I'm not sure if he can throw it into the box from there, though. <laughs> Maybe if the wind picks up. That's a little bit ambitious. Yeah, Antoine Esbers fighting for that ball. Ooh, Bad in the face. Clear. Number 17, Antoine Esper. 
oh, it would be sad to see him come out just going, just going in. Definitely one of the stronger players in the Duke forward line. Taking that hit a little bit harder. Right in the dome. They're going to sub him out for number nine. Just came off a back, Mason Selig. That must hurt. Especially at the temperature it is right now. There's That ball is going to be real hard, real rough to take into the face. Taking it like a champ, though. He might be on concussion watch even. I don't know why they're letting him <laughs> walk back to his position. They should definitely take him off as soon as possible. Make sure he's good. Yeah, it looks like he's going to step out. Somebody might need to check him out for concussion. That looks like it might have hurt. He looks hurt. Now we'll just see if he's going to come on for the rest of the, day, the he's game. He's taking a seat on the back line there. Duke number nine, though, adjusting to that position, playing hard from the start, putting a lot of pressure on it. But we shift the field down into the bottom third of this of this little portion. NC State taking that very quickly. Goes straight to Duke feet, though. They need to look for the opportunities. Trying to press forward, but maybe not so much space for it. Not many Duke players up there. Need to look at that back. But Mason Selig trying, to, uh, trying for an opportunity. A lot of pressure on him. Both teams seem frustrated. Antoine, excuse me, not Antoine Esperes. We have number 11, Romain Ortis, making those opportunities happen, taking his time, and now that's why. Stayed on the counter and good clearance there. Cleared very well, but straight to Romain Ortis for NC State. Again, one of the more difficult players for Duke to handle. Seems to get past every opportunity, but so lucky there. So lucky. A shot by NC State goes straight into the goalie, comes off, and recovered very well by the Duke goalie. Hopefully, he can take this quick, quickly, get it past the half. NC State does have the speed advantage overall here at Once Mackenzie again, Field. Lulu. Another sub making a difference in the game. That was number 10, Steven Sizemore, with a good shot on goal. Good good little blockage there by the Duke defense, trying to get it away, but the wind is picking up. Ball's going a little bit faster than they expected, and that goes to NC State feet before it reaches Duke feet. That's number 18, Griffin Brookshire. Been a little bit quiet since the beginning of the game, but clearly back, clearly showing that he is a force in this back line. Back line Holding it down, though, that's number five, Richard Wright in the mid-back position, number 18, Griffin Brookshire, and number 19, Tyler Conrad, both on the wings, holding it down for NC State. It's definitely not a good sign for Duke, for State to have 11 shots in total, and 10 of them being on goal. Yeah. <laughs> Must be stressful for the goalie. I'm glad you're taking stats now that you think about it. <laughs> Good pass there in the middle again. Quick defeat by State, but Duke getting that back. So is NC State not letting anything go. That was Joy DeSerafino with that recovery for Duke. For NC State, all the way out in the corner. Let's see how they do. Haven't really seen them take some shots from that side of the field. Seems a little bit. They seem a little bit more comfortable on the right side. But Romain Ortiz Ooh. trying to make the difference in the game. And that shot goes far high. Far high. A little bit of disappointment up there at that Duke front line. Not too pleased with that performance. Good idea though, just good, a bad shot. Good idea, needed to get his feet really set, get his hips set before taking that shot. That was number two, Joey DeSerafino with that. It looked more like a clear than it did a shot to be completely yeah. honest, which is not what you want when you have possession of the ball. And now it gives Duke a chance to restart and take that, which they did. High to NC State head. Cleared down the line to number 11, Romain Ortiz, using those fancy feet again as he has been doing the entire game. And that goes straight to number 11, NC State, Romain Ortiz, but they're covering him now, now that they realize that he's lethal to the Duke defense. Duke has really been sitting on top of him, not letting him have those opportunities to score, to put it in a scoring position. What do you think about his footwork so far? Been pretty fancy, huh? I think he, while it's it's great footwork and it's been working for him, he needs to get down to the basics, work on looking up and getting it to to state feet rather than trying to be the Cristiano Ronaldo of this team. 
He's playing a great position, has been playing a great game, and that's just a missed, misheaded by number two, Joy DeSerafino. Working off. captain of the NC State team. Off by like about two inches there. <laughs> yeah, just needed to be. A little taller. But yeah, back to Otis. Ortis, excuse me, he's been playing really well. Just needs to get, you know, work on getting those basics set. Is a little disappointed with himself, but again, there's a team of 11, not a team of one. So, just need to remember that he's not the only one on the field. NC State holding position near the midfield. Duke not letting them have it so easily, though. Good great defense by Duke. Yeah, great run and a takeaway by Duke's number eight. Austin Rogers has been a real force in their midline, but a little frustration there. Again, all the time in the world for number five, Richard Wright. They are underestimating him, underestimating his ability to pass. They need to put pressure on him and put pressure on that back line, even if they want to make things work. And just whatever that was. <laughs> a little back touch. Again, trying to be more finesse. They need to focus on getting those basics because it, all it takes is one tap. No need to flex your foot like that um, in order to make it work. Just needed to really be basic about it, and that would have been in the back of the net. Another corner coming up for State. Only their second of the match. Not a heavy corner game. We see it going off a lot to the side, but again, trying to make sure to keep it away from those set pieces. Let's see if they can find number 19 for State. Looks to be pretty tall. Let's see if they can find him. What's his name? That's um, number 19, Tyler Conrad, usually on the back line. Cleared high by Duke. Weird. Some bad settling there by number 11, Carson Monteverde. I think he missed time his jump there. And, again, he's not that tall. Should have waited if on the bounce a little bit for that one rather than trying to catch that one in the air. But goes to Duke. Again, number 11, Carson Monteverde. Number 8 for Duke, Austin Rogers. Try to get that one just a little bit far behind him. Duke manages to keep it, though. Trying to get the pass progression. Need to talk a little bit more. A little confusion there. And that's a free kick in Duke's favor. Not sure what the call was there. Maybe a hand ball? Uh, yeah, I think it did hit his hand. Number five, Richard Wright has been doing a great job. Yeah. In the middle of the back line there. A little quiet as far as not really, you know, being boisterous about his play, but being very, very meticulous about it and doing a really good job. The entire back line for State doing a great job. Yeah, they're pretty big. Another fancy footwork turnover. It just goes wrong. Again, stick to the basics, please. Duke is not a team where you can just, you know, fancy footwork at all because they're going to sit there. They're going to cover you, not let you give you those opportunities. Maybe on an easier team that would work. Oh, a little trip up on the ball by number 22 for Duke. That's Amani Ibrahim. And goes back to the middle of the field for NC State. A dangerous, dangerous position. Great pass to number 12 for NC State. Again, nameless. And a goal. He scores. Wish we knew his name. <laughs> Give him the attribution for that goal. We can come up with a name for him. <laughs> That was Connor. How about Trey? Trey he got the third goal. Okay. That was Trey. Number <laughs> number 12 for <laughs> NC State, Trey. But again, three goals, three different players. Duke looks pretty tired. Yeah, they only have one sub. They need to figure out. And even still, that sub is pretty, pretty out right now. Yeah, left with 11 guys for the rest of the game. Maybe their coach might consider putting on a uniform or something. <laughs> Well, maybe State can lend them some guys. But again, Duke is Duke's not playing the season, so this is kind of like a scrimmage match for them. They missed the regionals by one game last year, so they're still a pretty de decent team. So just figured out, uh, NC State's number 12. That's Harden, <laughs> not Trey. Harden, which is great since he's been playing a great game. Going what? to be talking about him a lot for the rest of the game. Glad we're able to give him credit now. And that goes number 11 with another goal in the Ortis. back of the net. Romain Your Ortis, guy. the super sub. Let's take him out, give him a break before he gets a hat trick. Didn't even have time to really set up and talk about it. Sorry, excuse me. Artem. Not Harden. <laughs> Artem Min. Well, a little confusion here. Sorry about that. 
just trying to make sure everybody gets the credit they deserve. The 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 rosters we are given before <laughs> the games are just <laughs> written on. And that's the half. half. NC State three. Four. NC State four. Excuse me. Ortis with two goals. And we'll then lead the pack. Min with one. And we have Jeremy Twill. That. Jeremy Twit with had one the first goal. First goal. You definitely need to do some regrouping here. Great half by State. Yeah, played very well. And we'll be back here at Method Field. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your one-stop shop for all things Wolfpack. Located in the Ridgewood Shopping Center off of Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop recently expanded from 2,400 to 5,400 square feet. Whether you're in need of tailgating essentials, decals and magnets, home goods, apparel for people of all ages, or sporting goods, the Red and White Shop has it all. Stop by today for your NC State needs. Welcome everyone to PNC Arena. I'm Leah Bruce from PAC TV and we're here to watch NC State take on Chapel Hill. The last time these two competitors met was late January when the Wolfpack came out on top 95 to 91 in overtime. Today the NC State team will have home court advantage in hopes to take down the Tar Heels once again. Sit is breaking down on a camel's back. They just have to go cause they don't know where. So I am fell the streets is appealing to see. You won't get under county cause you stand them free. You got a new horizon, it's ephemeral style. A melancholy town where we never smile. And all I wanna hear is the message beep. My dreams they gotta kiss me cause I don't get sleep, no. Go, 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 shop, shit, it, get it. We hire captains in a steady watch the shower get. Ah, 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 ah. Are you going to rush the court when the game's over? They're only ranked 27, so I don't think I'm going to rush a 27th ranked team, but... Point guard Joel Berry said he didn't consider NC State a rival. Would you guys consider the Tar Heels to be a rival? Well, if you value opinion, you know, I don't value his, but uh, look at this game. Definitely rivals. The road. Uh, they had a game over there to go beat UNC. here at Method Fields. Adam, how do you think this game has worked so far? What do you think is, you've seen in the half? Uh, a little bit of a blowout. Duke, obviously shorthanded today. Uh, Got to get more shots on goal. Um, if they play defense the whole half, it's going to get real tiring. So Definitely. You have to use as many opportunities as you can. And they don't really have a lot of, you know, a lot of men up there, but the ones that they do have up there do make opportunities. You just need to get it to them, make sure. And you got to work out that NC State midfield. They've been really possessing this whole game. It's not even the front line, really. Just it's that super sub 11, Romain Ortis. And Jeremy Twitt also in there holding it down. You just need to 
block them from opportunities and make as many as you need to score, you know? Right. Good news for Duke. Uh, also, number 17, Antoine Esper, will be back for the second half, even though he got a pretty hard hit to the head. Um, yeah, excited for him to come back. Yeah, glad he's, definitely glad he's feeling better. That was a little bit rough for us to watch, you know, sitting on the field. But what do you think NC State needs to do to keep possession of this game? Uh, maybe since we're up 4 nothing, work on something else for the next coming game. They play Chapel Hill on, I think, March 24th. And that team is ranked. So um, I guess just practice on new things. Maybe give, give some new guys a little run, see how they're feeling. Yeah, definitely. They haven't been really using it, using as many subs as in the bench as they used to. Like playing, only playing in players that have really been in there. So maybe, <laughs> maybe giving an opportunity for the guys on the bench, or maybe guys who, you know, managers even to to play, work out their legs, and see how they work with the team. Yeah, I'm excited for the second half. See if uh, maybe Duke can get a little run, a little comeback, make it more exciting. Yeah, and we'll be back from Method Fields. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your one-stop shop for all things Wolfpack. Located in the Ridgewood Shopping Center off of Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop recently expanded from 2,400 to 5,400 square feet. Whether you're in need of tailgating essentials, decals and magnets, home goods, apparel for people of all ages, or sporting goods, the Red and White Shop has it all. Stop by today for your NC State needs. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. This university is on a march to achieve our full potential. We help empower each other to dream big and do big. Our students are in a position to point to specific projects that they did in the real world, and that sets them apart. Companies want to hire NC State students. We're going to find solutions to some of the big problems and challenges. It's in the DNA of the place. We're here to think and do the extraordinary. Are you thinking about buying medicine online? A search for online pharmacies yields more than 20 million results. But which ones can you trust? Medicines bought from un from Method Fields, Duke with the first touches of the game. We can see number 17, Antoine Esbers, taking that first touch. He's in. He's trying to hype everybody up at the Duke side. He's like the LeBron James of this team. Hopefully he doesn't have a concussion, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be bad to put him back in with a concussion. Yeah, with midterms coming up, that's not convenient. Seems to be playing well, though. Duke coming back with the energy. Trying to get it front to the front, but as we can see, switching of the fields, by the way, in case you didn't notice. Yeah, I think that's how they do it in soccer these days. <laughs> do they? Do? But NC State using that back line again. Duke is a little bit frustrated, trying to keep it to the front. But, of course, this is the good goal, as we have seen. Duke finally scoring in the right direction. Maybe maybe going into the sun was the reason Duke couldn't score last half. Hopefully, especially with those white jerseys. Definitely reflective. Hard to, Let's hard to see. Oh, no. Missed touch. Missed touch by number 22, Amon Ibrahim, but also called offsides. Tell number 17, Antoine Esbert, trying to get back into the game. Good idea for Duke, though. Got to get a little more action on the state side. Yeah, definitely. State has been a little bit too comfortable. But that back line working just as hard now as they did in the beginning. That goes to number five, Richard Wright. Taken by a little bit of a, a, little bit of a scuffle here. A little though. dirty dancing over here. <laughs> you can find number one, side. Mason Selig, trying to keep that fell just a little bit. Ended up like Jennifer Gray to Patrick Swayze there. <coughs> it goes to State's number three, Yudai Kayama. I guess when you're up 4-0, you can experience a little different things <laughs> on the field. Forgot what sport he was playing there for a second. And that Duke midline number eight, Austin Rogers. Just a little bit of a mistouch. Picked up, trying to be picked up, and ricocheted off that shot 
almost was taken by number 11, Carson Monverde, ricocheted off of an NC State player. Good idea again for Duke. That's a goal kick for Duke. We've seen the ball a little bit more in, on the state side here. Excuse me, a goal kick for state, you're right. They got a new new goalie in that's number one, Daniel Newark, with a sick fit. Oh, beautiful in pink uniform. Very, very fitting. He's probably wearing it for K. Yes, today is the play for K game uh, with women's basketball. Quick sprint and pass back to the goalie. See, I'm always contentious with goalie passes. Um, you never know if the goalie's paying attention in that scenario. He never better be, though. quite ready for it. But, you know, with the Duke mm. goalie, the way that he's been playing so far, uh, probably not letting up on that. Incredibly poor clear by the NC State back line. Somehow managed to find Duke feet and find another chance. Romain Ortis blocked but not cleared as well. Gave Duke a time to set up for that. Hopefully a better clear by Duke. Needs to get that away, away from that part of the field. Antoine Esbers with a bad touch. That could have easily been 5-0, though. Good yeah, save by the goalie. for them, yeah. That's the seventh save on the game. So just imagine if he wasn't making saves today. <laughs> You're looking at a 12 to nothing score. Which I think, honestly, you just end at the half at that point. Yeah, I don't think there's a mercy rule, but maybe they should maybe think they of should. it. Think we of putting one in. See another direct, maybe an indirect for Antoine Esbers, the way they're setting up looks like an indirect, but I guess we'll see what, not for Antoine Esbers, excuse me, for number 11, Romain Ortiz. Four-man wall there You know, Duke. now that I look at it, this might be Romain Ortiz. It is. Didn't put the accent over there, but definitely Ortiz. <laughs> We've been saying it wrong this entire game. <laughs> but back to Duke feet, taking down the field. I'm sure he doesn't mind. Yeah, I'm sure he gets it a lot. I'm sure Trey will <laughs> talk it out with him. Have a good laugh later. Trey, Artem, Harden, whatever his name is. Also been quiet this part of the half. We'll make sure to scold the team captain for State afterwards <laughs> for his bad handwriting. I think State actually does offer a handwriting class. They They do, and they might offer a calligraphy class too. They might consider taking that. <laughs> Definitely not taking a class in defending, though. Doing Meanwhile, good action on the left side here for State. Centered in. Trying to switch the field. And a kick that goes high. Aiming for the goal in the sky there. Maybe going for a little bit of a, of a field goal. Definitely not going for the back of the net. That just goes too, too high. Beautiful pass off his chest, though, by Ortiz. Yes, Ortiz. <laughs> Did if, really well with that ball. If he just kept his head down, he probably would have definitely knocked down one into the goal. Fortunately for Duke, they get to set up a little bit there and hopefully take control of it. That's 17th shot for State. It's a big, big kick by Duke's number 21. That's Chase Hahn. Been quiet so far this game. Yeah, I haven't heard his name too much. Back into NC State's possession, though, in that NC State, that lethal, lethal back line. Duke is trying to make... Make part of it, but again, they're going they're going for body rather than going for the ball. They need to not not defend to the feet, but defend to the ball. You know, be patient, wait for those forward kings to work themselves out. State taking their time there. Definitely, Good pass. Duke's not applying the pressure that they need to. That was um, almost a clear header by number three, Jeffrey Lee, but Romine Ortiz. Oh. Does it go in? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Another save for Duke. That's his eighth save on the game. Ortiz looking for his third goal today. Mason Selig for Duke needs to be a little bit careful there. Took a little bit of a cleat to the inner thigh. Bad header by Duke. Goes straight to Ortiz. Luckily, didn't get to him, at least luckily for Duke. The Duke goalkeeper, Stodder, has been doing a great job, though. I mean, the score is 4-0, but he's been playing a lot better than the score says on the, on the score sheet. That's true. With all the ones he saves, he saved more than, what, 50% of what's been in the back of the net so far. We see a deep substitution. Number four, Viraj Patel, going in for number 22, Imani Brahim. I'm sure Duke is excited to head there. 
have their one sub back. For yeah. This half. <laughs> now everybody gets a chance to chance to relax a little bit. A little bit of confusion going on in the Two field. Two balls on the field. Maybe Last they decided to spice up the game. Yeah, a lot more than one. Make it more exciting. <laughs> Oh, bad pass there. Bad pass. One of the very few bad passes we see, but you know what? Made up almost. Another bad clear goes straight to Duke. Decent recovery there. Duke on Hopefully the attack. Jeffrey just needs to take the shot. Oh, so close. Jeffrey Lee taking the shot for Duke. Touched off. Goes for a Duke corner. Again, I thought that was a brilliant, brilliant shot. Way to take his space. Just went for it, didn't bother with all these fancy passes. Yet he saw his opportunity and took it. And especially, you know, being on the back line, that was such an ambitious shot to take. I'm glad he took it, though. Gives Duke an opportunity to set up for a set piece. Great oh. save there also by our goalie. First one of the match for him. Using that extension. Only the third on the whole entire game for State. Wow, so that, that ratio is definitely good for them. 100% from the box right now. But let's see what Duke continues to do if they continue to put pressure on them. I'm not sure if they'll get four, but, you know, at least one. Maybe two, yeah. Make it a little bit exciting. <laughs> Antoine Esber is trying to look for something. A lot of physical pressure by the NC State back line. Duke on the counter. Ortiz has a four on two. Running downfield, trying to Cristiano Ronaldo. Handball there. Ref doesn't call it. Number nine just checked into the game. Taking their time in the upper third. Using their space. Duke is not putting the pressure that they need to on the ball in order to create these mistakes. That goes high to NC State's number one, Sean Gange. Back to him, looking for a shot. Doesn't have it and just cleared by the Duke back line, fortunately for them. Gives them an opportunity to set up. NC State not taking it quickly, but goes to remain Ortiz, number 11 for NC State. Lots of great communication. That ball lost by number three for State, Udai Koyama. Duke's number eight, Austin Rogers, hoping to control it. Antoine Esbers has the ball now, using some really great footwork to keep that away from the NC State midline. Nice job for the state back line getting back there. And a great job switching the field by Duke as well. Goes a little bit a little bit forward. Bad clear, but somehow manages to find state feet. If Duke was behind that, surely that would have been a shot opportunity. But seemed to relax a little bit on that one. Wasn't covering the goalie as they needed to be. Antoine Esbers takes that. Goes to number 11, Carson Monverde for Duke. The Blue Devils put in a lot of pressure there. Handled easily by the goalie. I, I'm a little debatable about that one. It looked like an intentional pass back to the goalie. Um, but that goes uncalled by the ref. Again, in soccer, you're not allowed to intentionally pass it to your own goalie. The goalie cannot pick it up in that instance because the goalie is acting as a defender. Right. But that seemed like an intentional pass to me, not called. Um, not entirely too pleased with the officiating on that one. Luckily for Duke, a throw in for them. A little time to relax. They need to be taking it quickly, setting up quickly, and catching NC State off guard. Don't, don't do that though. Goes straight to red feet. Wolfpack dominating this half more than they were dominating the last half. But again, when you're up 4-0, <laughs> you can relax a little bit. <laughs> exactly. You still want to score as many as you can. Spread the love throughout <laughs> the players. Antoine Esbers seems to be seems to be working hard. The only one up there. See a lot of Duke players walking. Carson Monverde, one of them, but he hasn't been subbed out in a while, so maybe a little bit tired. Maybe time to look into a sub for him. Antoine Esbers running down the line. He needs to take the shot now. Working too hard on the touches, giving NC State a chance to settle back. But Raj Patel with a shot. And the air in a corner. Great job there. Two-man game on the right side of the field. That was some great defending up there by NC State. You have to score here. We have a player actually midfield getting yes. a little stretching. <laughs> because he can't. He doesn't have those substitutions. He has to play this entire game. The only sub that they have is at the forward. So this defensive line is getting a huge workout. This is also their first game of the spring semester. So maybe a little tired out there. Yeah, sometimes. definitely. At least they'll be conditioned for their next one. Rush Patel controlling that. Don't worry. 
Good center by Duke. A little bit far. A little bit of a send, and just just barely saved by NC State's Daniel Newark. Duke really hoping for an opportunity there. Didn't have enough power on that. It was a header, of course, so lost power in the air, but definitely a great opportunity by Duke. Looking a little tired out there. Duke can't let up in this game, though, if they want to stay in it. Mm, I think they pretty much realize it's over. Don't want to give up, but... Yeah, but you, you know when you know. Yeah. Yeah. Raj Patel, I'm not really sure what he was doing there with that uh, with that pass. Maybe trying to give an opportunity for Duke to set up, but um, didn't really seem too wholehearted with that. Oh, bad pass. Almost stolen. Some great running there by number nine, Mason Selig. Not a lot of pressure on the ball there. Number three for NC State, Udai Kayama seems to be controlling. That has all the space in the world to make all the passes he wants, and that's why it gets past the midfield. Can't can't do that, especially with skilled players like Yodama, excuse me, like Koyama. State definitely taking their time here. Not a lot of pressure on them. But then you have to ask yourself, what's more important, pressuring the ball or having that energy to run it down? Here comes another chance. Bad pass, but a great save by Duke's goalie. Janice Stoddard. Janice, I think it is. He has been, the, I think, the man of the game for Duke. Definitely. In addition to Antoine Esbers, both of them putting in the necessary energy. Four goals for Wolfpack, then definitely not all his fault. Yeah, you know, sometimes in that back line is, is exercised out, not working as hard. You, there's just nothing you can do, you know. There's You always have blind spots which your defense is supposed to be covering and um, just wasn't doing that this game. And that all goes back to what you were started the broadcast with, which is communication. Now there's turnover. Back to NC State feet. Looking for an opportunity. Can't really seem to do it. Maybe they're trying not to, but Duke has the ball now. NC State not letting up on Duke at all. Switching of the field. Good job there. Fast break by number one for NC State, Sean Gange. A little good flick down the line by number four, um, Nameless. Get a little center here. And a lot of communication going down, trying to, oh, great headed clear. Needs to go to, to Duke feet first. A and it's a free kick eight. for the Wolfpack. It's like a little push off there. With as much physicality as there is in soccer, sometimes that, that stuff's to be expected. Luckily, they're being very, very good about it. Um, last game, we saw a lot of tension between the NC State women's club soccer team and UNCW with, with the pushing as far. But women's soccer is a lot more physical than we have been seeing. Um, and this will be taken by number 11, the super sub, Romain Ortiz, being set up like a direct kick. Goes the wall straight again. into the wall. And a shot attempt goes wide by number... Jesse Ball, number four, uh, 14, unnamed. Unnamed. <laughs> now I'm wondering if they're just switching jerseys to switch it up on us. <laughs> keep us on us. our toes. Can't see faces really well from out here, so it's hard to, hard to tell who it might be. It is a corner. For NC State. State, looks like number 11, Romain Ortiz. Their third one of the game. Looks like he's really the man to take all of those, all of those direct kicks, all of those opportunities. Has a great curve, but goes for a pass instead. I never liked that play. Keeps it on the ground as well. Usually if you're going to go for that, it's so that you have time to set up for a, for a kick off the ground. But a number three, Yude Koyama, just doesn't seem to get it off the ground. A little frustration there. Goes high. And cleared, almost cleared by Duke. Doesn't, don't really do a good job of that. They're finally taking it downfield though, trying to get it out of their half. It's been sitting there for a long time. Goes straight to Duke feet, or straight to NC State feet and kept their Duke back line working really hard. Terrible, terrible clear by number 21, Chase Hahn. Looking for an opening. 
the back line of State is getting a little frustrated with the forwards. Oh, definitely. Trying to make more opportunities. Number 17, Antoine Esbers running hard. Goalie comes up for it with a kick. I don't know why. Kicked and knocked down. See, that's one of those things where it's not a foul if you're weak, you know? Shouldn't have gone down for that. Shouldn't have planted his feet on the ground. There's no reason he should have been on the ground after that one. Antoine Esbers wasn't running that hard. Didn't hit him with a lot of force. You just got to keep your feet on the ground. As a goalie, you can't be wobbly like that. Ends up on the ground again. Good shot for Duke there. With yeah. The Duke, uh, I mean, the state goalie a little, maybe he's a little dazed off that fall. <laughs> a little winded over there. To me, that looked like that went off of him, and I think the ref would agree because that is a corner for Duke. 6-1 for the Blue Devils this game. They have three more than State. For at least that's going for them. Yeah, at least, but they can't seem to capitalize on those opportunities on their set pieces. They're beating us in two categories so far. It's corners and saves. But not where it matters, right? Yep, not in goals. Goes high, not as deep as they would want it. Misses Duke feet, goes straight to number 11. Romain Ortiz doesn't seem to find an opening. A little frustrated there. And just booted away. Duke back line, that's number 21, Chase Hahn and Jeffrey Lee having a little bit of communication there. Oh. Taking off the head? Duke's, Duke's not. They knocked his headband off. Players aren't so great at avoiding the ball. The man bun is off. <laughs> Let's see if he can get that up again. And it looks like with the man button, it has been handled. I mean, if only he was good at keeping it simple as he was at putting his hair up in a bun, maybe he wouldn't have as many turnovers and missed opportunities as he's had this duration of the game. He does have two goals, however. He, he does have two goals. Job. Yeah, I should let up on him because of that. But again, playing simpler, playing cleaner would have made sure he had more. Oh, back of the net. The assist by number 11, Romain Ortiz. See, keeping it simple works in this NC State team flavor. Did you see who had that shot? I did not, but tightening up that man bun let him have that beautiful <laughs> assist for that goal. It is now 5-0 for State. Uh, they might consider just putting in their bench guys now, give them a little run. Ortiz looks like he's probably done for the game. Yeah, it looks like he's coming off. No reason for him to go on. Looks like the, the actual score is coming off. They will get a chance to see who that was. If he turns. And number, number nine. nine. Number nine, Jeremy Twitt. Second goal of the game for him. He is started that right? us off. Yep. That's the second one. Ref is taking him off because they don't want any hat tricks here. want everybody to have equal opportunity to score. Hopefully Duke can get one in the back of the net. Oh, poor pass by number three, Jeff Lee, Lee for Duke. Doesn't seem to have a lot of those, but maybe just a little bit frustrated by the game so far. And NC State controls possession of this Number in the two. Duke half. Oh, great save by the Duke goalie. He needs to take his time, set up, make sure he's going well. Antoine Esber is coming back to help out that back line a little bit. A little, a little bit of frustration. Not a little bit, a lot of frustration here. Need to be careful. Need to clear that ball. Another goal. And another one. Artist. No assist. Artem. Artem. <laughs> Artem Min for NC State. That is his second. Second goal. We have only three scores this game. Three scores, each guy with two goals. Let's see if they take him off and give somebody else an opportunity. Maybe they've exhausted their sub lists. Duke also looks incredibly exhausted as well, especially that midfield and back line, putting in a lot of work. Antoine Esbers as well, playing every position, it seems like, on the field. He needs a sub, it H looks like. Hands on knees for Esper, number 17 for Duke. I think he looks about done. And yeah, especially taking that hard hit. Look, Duke needs to look at him. He's wide open on the field, wide open. That goes straight to Duke and uh, just decked there. <laughs> Sean Gage. Jeffrey Lee with the hard run, trying to make that clear. Good defense by Lee. Nobody over there. Just in Poor touch to start with by number 18. That's Griffin Brookshire for NC State. But works in their favor, though. Duke needs to capitalize on those poor touches because NC State is tired. NC State is making those mistakes. Switching in the field to Antoine Esbert has all the space in the world. Needs to get rid of it, though. And see number 22 downfield just waiting, waiting Amon Ibrahim for a pass. Switches the field. Good idea for Duke, but a bad touch by number two for Duke. 
The ref called offsides on Duke. Mm, he's closer than I am. I wouldn't agree with that call, though. It but if close. he's over there. And a quick, a quick touch taken by NC State. Pressure put on the goalie. Goes wide. NC State's uh, sub and goalie, Daniel Newark, having some bad touches on that ball since his since coming in. I think that Duke needs to capitalize on that. You know, put pressure on him to make a mistake in the box. As much as it, it's nice to be up 6-0, but you definitely don't want to let a goal in. No. The defense takes a lot of pride in not allowing any goals. Yeah, so. a shutout is better than a 6-1 a or 6-2 game. Especially once uh, the better teams start coming into There is no way. The field here. No way that pass should have worked. I'm <laughs> incredibly upset that the Duke defense didn't look at that a little bit harder. Oh, oh goes high. Save. But time to set up. Great run made by number four, Viraj Patel, who we have seen play forward. Came back, dropped back to pick that up. Aman Ibrahim with a good head flick. Kept in possession by number 11 for Duke. That is Carson Monteverde. Switching of the fields. Need to get there before NC State player does. Keep them off of it. Let NC State make the mistakes. Great pass number 22 for Duke. Aman Ibrahim, but passes it a little bit too far downfield. Manages to keep it in. Somehow needs to cross it to the center. That's where all of the men is, are for Duke, but doesn't seem to do that. And it's NC State's possession. A lot of buildup. An unfortunate result. Couldn't get it in the back of the net and couldn't even get it into scoring range for Duke. Good effort saving that ball from going out of bounds, though. Yeah, he ran hard for that. And Took again, a lot of effort. Not that tall, so definitely an effort made by him and seems to do it, seems to keep it in. He looks exhausted, though. He's walking back. Yeah, we're getting a substitution for Duke even right now. Number nine, Mason Sellett, came off earlier, is coming back on. Giving number five, Richard Wright, all the space in the world. Again, a theme that we've seen come down here. Goes out. Opportunity for subs. Good slide tackle there by Jeffrey Lee, I think. Yes. Well played. Number 14 comes off. Uh, his name is Jeff. Last name, I don't know, but I just heard him say Jeff, and Jeff came off. So There goes Jeff. <laughs> that's what we're going by. They might be playing with us again, though. <laughs> that's true. We don't know what they're doing. Quick turn. I think he was offsides on that one, but um, good passing wasn't called. Good and you know, good tackling for that ball. Number nine just came on. Mason Selig for Duke got that away, and it's Duke possession now. Needs to switch the field. Trying to push everybody forward. Trying to hold that back that back line down. Create an offsides trap. Let that one go. Mason Selig should have tried for that a little bit more. Thought Antoine Esbers or was more inside than he actually was. And that goes wide. Too far, yeah. That'll be a goal kick. Other than the win, this game has been pretty nice to be at. Definitely, yeah. Beautiful weather. Sun's out. It's shining. It says it's only 48, but it definitely feels a lot warmer than that. Oh, agreed. Yesterday was 43. These are not even close to being the same temperature. And the field's dry, luckily for them. So a couple of the guys that have taken a hard fall have kind of come up pretty clean. White jerseys are still white. The good thing their goalie's not wearing white, though. Big kick, you're right. <laughs> Lots of grass stains for that guy. Big kick. Raj Patel holding the ball. Sees Antoine Esbers. I think he just needed to take the shot from there, honestly. Yeah. Raj Patel, again, tr making all the difference for the NC State front line. Working hard. They need to keep with the ball, though. They cannot just pressure and then unpressure it. They have to stick Ooh. with it, keep making pressure on the ball. And that's why we're seeing... And number 12, oh, oh big great, slide, that. great tackle, dangerous tackle in the box. That was by number 16 for Duke. That's Jonathan Stern, again, quiet, but a huge, huge tackle to number 12, Artem Min. I'm trying to prevent a second goal. Again, that was super, super dangerous. It looked pretty aggressive to me. Might have, might have gotten away with a penalty call there. Luckily for them, it was to ball and not to feet, so... Wasn't ref didn't see any danger with that. Again, a good clear, kept inside by NC State though gives them an opportunity to cross the field and score. Nobody's there though. 
just over his head. There's Goes a goal out. kick for the Blue Devils. Two subs. Chase Hahn going back in. Joey DeSerafino coming out in the favor of Will Glass. Will was a pretty staple force in the beginning. The team captain stepping off probably for the last time today. Yeah, giving your new guys a chance. His work is done for today. Antoine Esbers comes off. Played a hard game. Looked like they were a little bit afraid of the ball in that section. I don't know what that was. Need to keep your head up, though. Can't just tuck it in like a turtle. <laughs> I like that one. Thanks. It's a, it's a Zach Selwaye-esque. Jeffrey Lee running hard. Again, one of the men of the game for Duke. Playing nearly every position. We see him up top right now. Just a bad, honestly, this goalie needs to work on getting it a little bit farther for a little bit longer. Overrunning the ball just a little bit. Up for debate. Goes to offsides. See, you got to be careful. Amon Ibrahim would have had a great scoring opportunity had he had been onsides. Wasn't, though. And that goes right back to NC State. Again, you got to watch those offside traps. He should have seen it. Yeah, he... He looks a little tired to me, doesn't it? Yeah, I think he was just trying to doesn't see if have he could the get away to get with get back it. on sides. Big kick. Another long pass for Ide the Wolfpack. Koyama was able to take that downfield. Duke getting in front of it, though. A good, oh, yeah, Jeffrey Lee. Good job with the chest there. Great control by Lee. He seems to be having the stamina to play. Oh, now he's fighting. Oh, a little WWE action there. I don't really know what that was or why that was risk. Number five, Richard Wright has been playing a good game, but I don't know what that was. He had control of the ball. There was nothing there. And Richard will see a yellow card by the referee. I think that was warranted as well. Both players having a little a little pulling and pushing. A little there. dispute there. Personally, I think that all that blame goes right to Richard. He had control of the ball. NC State had control of the ball. There was no reason. He wasn't in a scoring opportunity. It's just reckless, honestly, is what that was. Injuring both himself and potentially injuring another player, too. No real reason for that. He should have just let that one go. Yeah, Duke can't afford another injury on this team. You're right. Both of them, I mean, they're adults. Should have should have just been responsible about, about that play. Just... Honestly, I, I, don't, I can't even fathom why. You seem pretty disappointed. Louis. I am really disappointed. You know why? Because there was no point in that putting yourself at risk. He wasn't in a goal-scoring opportunity. He was literally in the middle of the field. There's just nothing, nothing about that that seems clean. And you're up 6 nothing. <laughs> so it's not like there wasn't even a threatening move by Duke. But we I don't see know. a substitution. Richard comes off in favor of Tyler Conrad. Jeffrey Lee not shaken, though. Holding on to his man. NC State has possession of the ball. Good flick there by NC State. And a good back flick to number eight, Will Glass. And even though you've been complaining about Ortiz's fancy play, there's been a little bit of something missing ever since he went there off. There has. It has been really basic. Um, I guess he just seems to add that, that pizzazz, that finesse to the little NC sauce. State team. <laughs> yeah, sure, let's go with that. A little bit sauce in the middle of the field. Um, Duke Duke has their own form of special sauce, though. Jeffrey Lee and Antoine Esbriz and even Viraj Patel holding it down for the Duke front line, making those plays happen. Viraj Patel running hard for the ball. Doesn't seem to be winded at all. I guess our secret sauce, just a little bit better. Yeah, just a little bit better. Six and a little better. bit taller, so yeah. definitely a help. Amani Ibrahim keeping it somehow and just losing it again. Little squabble for the ball over there on that side of the field. Well, you definitely need some water, need some electrolytes in their system. We see that Antoine Esbrez is getting ready to come back on. Who for, though? Anybody, anybody, <laughs> any of them want to sub at this point. Honestly, whoever I, whoever runs to him first gets time off. I say we put him in the back line for Duke because that back line needs some refreshing. Ooh, some fancy footwork by number one Sean Gange. 
and a hard fall taken by number eight for Duke Austin Rogers. Playing a rough game. He'll be all right. Number four, the nameless face for NC State, taking that one out. Antoine Esbury is going on for Amon Ibrahim in the front line, being the sole forward for Duke. NC State seems to kind of lost, uh, have lost whatever formation they started out the game with, but that that front line still holding it down. They might be working on some new things. Yeah, trying out some some new positions maybe. Maybe we will even see Richard Wright come back on as a goalie. Who knows at this point? As we said earlier, this state team is really good. They went to the Nationals last year, last semester actually in Phoenix, and just barely lost to BYU in the quarterfinals 1-0. Right. So they definitely want to get back in there and cause a little commotion. But again, barely the best in this conference because didn't they win the regional match in penalty kicks? So to UVA. Yes. So definitely not necessarily the best in that conference. That, however, what was happening in the middle of the field was just reckless. Two people jumping up for the ball. Um, no offside calls, though. Duke begging for it. Now finally calls a goal kick. Duke is able to set up for the next phase. State with lots of subs here late in the game. Yeah, we see number nine, Jeremy Twitt. Two goal scorer come in for another two goal scorer, Artem Min. Finally get a chance to rest. You can see how much his run has deteriorated over the course of the game. <laughs> All these guys, very, very tired, playing a hard game. Let's see if he can get his hat trick. Number 17, Antoine Esbers passes to Jeremy Lee. Oh, and just, just taken. Sorry, not Jeremy Lee, Jeffrey Lee. Excuse me, just, just taken. A lot of NC State talking. Duke way more quiet, maybe trying to preserve all of their energy, preserve their breath. They've been running a hard game. We see Jeffrey Lee finally walking. That goes wide right to the Pack tv station. Oh, my gosh, trying to get us involved with the play. Haven't played soccer in a couple of years. I don't think I'll do anything for y'all guys. Yeah, as much as we uh, make fun or talk a little bit of trash about these guys, they're 100 times better than us. Oh, definitely. And if I, we were out there, I don't even think we would last 10 minutes. So. I would roast me if I was out there. So Absolutely. These guys deserve all the credit in the world for doing what they do. Yeah, Pack tv versus men's club soccer or Duke is not coming up anytime nope. soon. <laughs> I'm glad they wanted to get us involved, though. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Maybe they can. Maybe they're listening and they can hear all of us, all our chatter. Maybe they're trying to trying to put you in as a sub. Um, yeah, I think those days are past <laughs> me. I'm more of a watch the game on the couch type of guy now. Oh, Meg! How unfortunate! A Meg by number one Sean Gaines for NC State to number 21. Chase Hahn for Duke, he's going to feel that. And you're talking about the nutmeg, right? Yes. The nutmeg, when you pass a ball in between a player's legs, and you know what? It's saved on YouTube for everybody to watch. So definitely making it in the highlights for this team. It's a goal kick for Duke. Looks like Ortiz might be warming up a little bit. He just wants to come back on. He misses it. He adjusted his hair and he's ready to go back in. NC State with the ball. Looking for a goal scoring opportunity and Ooh. deflected off the back of number eight, Austin Rogers, taking a lot of balls to his person today. Taking their time there for NC State. Looking for an opportunity to make it 7-0. Not sure if they'll get it with the remaining time that we have. And looks like another corner for State. Their fifth one coming up. I do not think they've scored off of any corner, so maybe nice to see one go in. Can't tell if they're trying to take their time or go quickly. Just easy. Easy deflection by number eight. Austin Rogers goes downfield to Antoine. As Burris, finally an opportunity, it seems like, for Duke lost on the ball by number 11, Carson Monteverde. Not happy with that opportunity. 
on the ground pass by NC State's goalie. Seems like he's being a little, little lazy. Needs to be careful and tighten that up before he gets one in the back of the net. All the time in the world for NC State to make that pass. Great look by number 16. Jonathan starting a little quiet this game. Oh. And kept by number 17 for Duke, Antoine Esbers. Again, the man of the match. Trying to switch the field. Got a little tripped up. Worked out in his favor, though. A hard run by NC State's number two, the captain, Joey DeSerafino. And goes that's out. man of the match for Duke, right? Yeah, man of the match for Duke. Antoine Esbers playing every position that he sees on the field and more. Who would you say has been the most important person for State in well, this game? See, that's the thing. I think it's the back line, honestly. You can commend, and that's a call. The end of the match, Antoine Esbers is not happy with not getting a call in that one. He seems to be completely burnt out, worked as hard. All the Duke players did the best that they could, and we have more to talk about during our stand-up, don't we? Definitely, dude. Duke definitely looking a little tired. Lots of guys stretching it out right now. Definitely a little tight legs. We'll be right back at Method Fields. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your one-stop shop for all things Wolfpack. Located in the Ridgewood Shopping Center off of Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop recently expanded from 2,400 to 5,400 square feet. Whether you're in need of tailgating essentials, decals and magnets, home goods, apparel for people of all ages, or sporting goods, the Red and White Shop has it all. Stop by today for your NC State needs. Welcome everyone to PNC Arena. I'm Leah Bruce from PAC TV and we're here to watch NC State take on Chapel Hill. The last time these two competitors met was late January when the Wolfpack came out on top 95 to 91 in overtime. Today, the NC State team will have home court advantage in hopes to take down the Tar Heels once again. Santa's breaking down on a camel's back. They just have to go because they don't know where. So all your favorite streets is appealing to see. You won't get under county because you're damn damn free. You got a new horizon, it's ephemeral style. A melancholy town where we never smile. And all I want to hear is the message beep. My dreams, they got a kiss because I don't get sleep, no. No, 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 stop, shit, it, did it. Keep high, your captain's in a steady watch the shower, bitch. Ah, 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 ah. No, no, stop, shit, it, did it. Keep high, your captain's in a steady watch the shower, bitch. Ah, 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 ah. Are you going to rush the court when the game's over? They're only ranked 27, so I don't think I'm going to rush a 27th ranked team, but... Point guard Joel Berry said he didn't consider NC State a rival. Would you guys consider the Tar Heels to be a rival? Well, if you value opinion, you know, I don't value his, but uh, look at this game. Definitely rivals. The road. Uh, they had a game over there to go beat UNC.
We're here at Method Fields with Romain Ortiz, our man of the game. So what do you think that you did to help uh, the state victory? Um, I think it was a great game with the team. Um, it was my second game, actually, so I need to get used to the team and play with the other guys. Uh, but we trained hard and uh, was a very good vibe with the team today. So you seem to have a lot of fancy footwork. You know, where do you get this from? Did you pick it up? How did you learn and how did that help with the state victory as well? Uh, because I, I, I've been playing 50 years football in France at the high level competition. So um, I injured and now I'm back in the, in the pitch. Uh, so I, I, work hard to, I work hard to bring my skills for the team and to play with the teammates. And uh, that's why I did the best today. And uh, I'm very proud of the team today. You had two goals and one assist. You should be very proud of that. <laughs> and you. we're going to sign off from Method Fields. I'm Lou, that's Adam Overrick, and we're so glad to be with you. Thank you. Yeah.